Welcome back. So in this example video, in this uh, Jupyter Notebook, I want to walk you through one of the cautionary tales, kind of one of the pitfalls that you can fall into when you're doing the SVD, the singular value decomposition. And again, this example is from uh, our, our book, Data Driven Science and Engineering. So you can go download the code and play around with this yourself. But the SVD is particularly good when your data is aligned in a way that um, individual rows mean the same thing across all of your columns. Okay, so let's let's talk about some examples of this. So if I'm doing the eigenfaces example where I have a bunch of human faces and I'm reshaping these into x vectors, uh, x1 and x2, then this eigenfaces example only really works when these, uh, these faces are kind of cropped and aligned in the same way across every face. So that if I'm comparing, I'm going to take the, remember the SVD is based on the inner product or the, cor the correlation matrix or the inner product matrix of all of these, these images with each other. And so when I'm taking the inner product of these two images, I want to make sure that the pixel that corresponds to an eye here corresponds to an eye here. So what we need is for that row to mean the same thing, kind of an apples to apples comparison across all of the columns. If I have an example where one face is up in the left corner and one face is down in the, the bottom right corner so that you know, nothing lines up, then this is going to be really a, a kind of useless decomposition. It's not going to help us understand the structure of human faces unless things are, are cropped and aligned in the right way. Similarly, we looked at that ovarian cancer data set. Um, and in that ovarian cancer data set, we had 216 patients. Each of them had 4,000 genetic markers. And this is a great example of data that's aligned because it was the exact same 4,000 genetic markers across every single individual person. And so in this case, uh, looking at correlations across these, these columns and these rows really is an apples to apples comparison uh, from patient to patient. Okay, But if I take a simple system that I know is low rank and I just do something simple like rotate it or in this case translate it, it destroys that correlation structure uh, in the data. Okay, So this is a very simple example to illustrate how bad things can get. Uh, you can play around with it yourself. Oftentimes we use the SVD in physical systems where the columns of X are measurements of a physical system as they evolve in time. Like maybe I have uh, some traveling wave structure that I'm measuring in time. And even though our human eyes are really good and our human brains are good at recognizing patterns like translational invariance and rotational invariance, uh, the SVD can't figure that out. So it's a big caution that if you have data that is translating or rotating, uh, the SVD is not going to give you a good representation until you kind of factor out that translation and rotation. In the case of images, that means cropping and aligning. Okay, so here in this Jupyter Notebook, we're going to cook up an example that is a really simple rank one system. Here, we have this, this matrix. This is essentially an, an image of a matrix of zeros and ones, just white and black. Uh, and so you can tell that this is a very, very low rank matrix. In fact, this matrix would be the product uh, of this column times that row. Okay, that's what this matrix is. It's a rank one matrix, just zeros and ones. And if I take the SVD of this, I'll find that there is exactly one dominant mode and everything else is tiny at the machine precision. But if I do something silly, like I rotate this matrix even a little bit, so I rotate this matrix by, by 10 degrees, now when I take the SVD of this matrix, it's no longer aligned. There's this rotation. We as humans know that there's this rotational invariance. It's still one object. It's a square. It's kind of a rank one object in my mind. But when I compute the SVD of this, I'm going to have an explosion of the rank. These singular values are not going to decay. I'm going to have a lot of modes I need to keep track of. And so plotting the singular values here, this is the, the singular value spectrum of the properly aligned square that is in fact rank one. And you can see there's one mode and then a bunch of stuff at the noise floor. This is 10 to the minus 12. 
But in my rotated matrix spectrum, you see that there is this explosion of rank. I need 250 modes to capture just the same square, but rotated by a few degrees. Okay, so this just points out the danger of working your SVD on data that might be rotating or translating. Okay, so even though we know about those invariances, the SVD doesn't, and it causes a big problem uh, in this rank explosion. So we can also do this kind of exaggerated case where we take the square and we rotate through lots of angles. And what we can see here is that it's a little faint, but you can see it goes from kind of red through dark blue through light blue. And as you go through those different progressions of angles, you can see this rank getting worse and worse and worse and worse. You get this explosion of rank as you rotate this out of alignment. Okay, to us, it's still a rank one object, but to, um, to the, the SVD in Python, it doesn't know about that. Okay, and this is actually one of the major successes of neural networks, at least as translation invariants in these convolutional neural networks. So that's a good reason people use these so often, because CNNs can actually handle a lot of this, this uh, translation of objects and pictures. Rotations are still pretty tricky, other symmetries are tricky, um, but I just want to point out this cautionary tale that when you use the SVD for data um, that's rotating or translating, you're going to run into trouble. Okay, thank you.